Welcome, so this is a small video for Divine Alignment. The predominant focus is really helping to access the crown chakra, to be able to facilitate through the energy system the grounding that's required, the balancing of the left and right hemispheres of the brain, the Edal Pingali channels, the masculine and the feminine channels within us, and to allow everything to come into divine alignment, which is also energetic alignment and physical alignment. So I'm going to first of all move through a sequence just silently, just so that we get the essence of it being like a, an explorative dance, just to sort of unwind the fascia, to open the energy gates and to allow the pranic flow for everything to harmonise, but also open dynamically and yet ground and root. So there's elements of stillness and there's elements of flow and fluid exploration. We're diving into something and moving, breathing, pulsing, undulating, and then perhaps backing off and revisiting it. So it's very much like a live exploration rather than trying to hold poses for long periods of time. We're gonna be exploring more sort of moving like a fluid dance, or really allowing that element of ether, of air, to allow the light to be facilitated through the Nadi system, the nervous system, and the whole energetic system, and all the koshas, the energetic bodies. So just beginning with a centering, grounding practice, find yourself in a comfortable Sukhasana. So you might like half Pamasana, it's the half lotus. And then if you're here, you want to really root the spine down through your grounding cord, and yet grow tall, to lift up through the crown so that we take out the compression between each vertebra. Allow the shoulders to relax, opening the heart space. And then you feel that sense of alignment come in as you grow tall and yet root down. So we've always got this principle of that rising and rooting, the sort of the cosmic force and the earthing force, where everything's coming into harmony, into balance, into this horizontal and vertical line so it all meets here at the heart so through the practice if you find that you sort of space out or you lose the contact with somatically feeling and unraveling from within come back to the heart come back to the center and just come back to the simplicity of breath so we begin with the opening prayers which is this call to divinity to awaken within us this call to come into divine alignment Om Dhyanamod Avalan Gulavatim Tejamahi Himnesh Tiki Snigda Pangla Velokanim Bhagavatim Mandas Mita Sri Mukhi Vatsalyam Ratarvashinim Sumadaram Sankirtanala Pini Shaimangim Marasikta Suktihim from the Anjali Mudra at the heart, take your hands together, bring your elbows up to the same height as the shoulders and press firmly in to fire up the armpit muscles as you drop the shoulders down away from the ears. Take a full inhalation, rising up to literally become an open, clear channel, a vessel for this light. And then making a very clear intention for your practice, a prayer. Allow the hands to open like a bud, just blossoming. So it's just a sort of blooming, flowering, like spring-like awakening. As the lotus flower opens, but the heels of the hands are connected, the thumbs and the little fingers. The arms are straight up. Full inhale, when you breathe, you breathe up from the power of the earth. All the way through the Shushimana, the central life force channel. And then allow that rain of grace to open and download through you as you open the hands, stretch out the arms. And turning the palms down, glide the arms down to earth softly moving really slow in that flow and just see what it does to calm the energy system to activate the parasympathetic and you feel that slow flowing equalized movement 
grounding the hands onto the earth, just take a little bow, surrender. In this practice of divine alignment is truly surrendering the ego. The I sense a separate doer. So you just allow the form to move and flow and breathe. Just playing with the opening, moving us out of stagnation or tamas or unconsciousness. And then you gather from the earth in this sort of prayer mudra, drawing up, again coming up like the lotus rising from the mud, rising up, piercing the surface of the lake through Maya, opening to the light in the full open lotus, stretch out the fingers like the petals of the fingers opening, breathing in and exhale as you descend. Taking a bow, rooting down, then gathering, literally gathering life force from the earth, especially if you feel tired or exhausted, you sense this sense of drawing power from that primal mother. And as you rise up, think of the lotus flower rising through the mud, through the darkness, opening to the light. Looking up, so you feel the eye massage, the massage for the brain as well. As you look up, stretch the eyes open. Maximize that inhale, full drawing in of life force and let that fresh flow of pranic energy move through your auric field as you glide your hands down. And you could be doing this for a few times and you can move through quite flowing. But the sense is sort of letting go of the doer within it in the sense of trying to get it right or trying to go for a technique more, just explore that fluidity of movement and feel how that makes you feel. So keep checking inside into this somatic awakening that it's creating. And then sealing that practice, just coming into Garuda, so the thumbs interlace, swiveling round, and just in this consolidation mudra, resting at the heart as you bring your chin to your chest, tongue to the roof of the mouth, in Jalandarabandha. Jalandambara, Jalandarabandha is where we are sealing the throat chakra, just building energy there in the throat. And you can feel the breath, the inhale and the exhale. And if you like to use Ujjaya breath, you could try that now, just filtering the breath in slowly. But you feel the breath is really drawing up from the earth, up to the crown, clearing that central channel, and breathing out, surrendering down to earth. Find that point of stillness, centering. So the asana flow begins with this meditation, centering and stillness and then bringing the hands into the mudra where you just gently hold the Svadhasana chakra. So just below the navel, just placing your hand there and the left hand on the heart, stilling and feeling and that sense of heart centering. So you're just receiving, tuning in, feeling what's here, being with whatever is showing up, meeting what is, not trying to alter it in any way, just allowing maybe there's a certain emotion or a, a stuck feeling or maybe an ache or a pain. But instead of labeling it or trying to work it out or push it away, we just breathe into it and soften. So predominantly the sense of an asana flow into divine alignment is about softening, is about surrender, is about relinquishing the doer, the achiever, the striver, the sense of rajas in us to be moved, to let the flow of life optimally move through, to let go. Take your time here as long as you need in meditation with it. Just reorientating back to this that is aware. So although this body will be moving in space, you can feel that you are the space in which the body is moving. So you're more orientating to the wholeness of totality and allowing this little form just to come into alignment with that. Because all the conditions of the body-mind, all the dysfunctions, all the illnesses and balance we get, because we've come out of this alignment, we've come out of that listening, and we're being moved from our conditioning, identified to the body. This builds up blockages and areas of shutdown. So we're intending to awaken them up, to activate this self-healing principle. 
Take out the hands and just ground them for a moment, stretch the arms out, placing on top of the knees. Inhale, open the heart, lift the heart to the sky. Exhale. And you will be doing it, I can't because of pregnancy, but you can draw the navel in towards the spine, emptying out in Uddiyana Bandha, just like <sighs> Release the waist, release whatever no longer serves you, whatever you feel has been congested, holding you back, holding, holding in or suppressing. It doesn't need to be consciously known, just intend for that release to happen, like a little detox. We are in spring after all, take an inhale. Open up with a somatic yes as the heart stretches open, the fascia at the heart stretches open. The scapula draws together, the lats draw down the back, shoulders drawing away from the ears. Open the throat, a little massage for the thyroid here, full inhale. As the head goes back, exhale, empty the breath. And you might like to do it with a little hole in your mouth and just sort of a sigh out like this golden thread breath where you can feel like a golden thread weaving out. So as you inhale, all that breath and life force in through every part of the energy system and body. Exhale, empty out the old. And then flow with the spine. So you're awakening the spine through this wave-like motion in the rhythm that suits you. And taking that motion there release the legs just have a shake out and bring yourself into this l shape dandasana in a sort of staff sitting pose you can plug your hands down now if they're too far away you could use a block plug them into the earth and extend the feet out so you, you're really pressing through the heels curling the toes towards you activating the bundles of the knees drawing the quads in and allowing the length of the spine. So if you collapse, notice this, just maybe nurturing you like little rolls into your kidneys, circles in towards the spine. Feel that warm up for the lower back. And then plugging the hands down, really grow tall, and yet at the same time ground down. So you feel the heart space open, shoulders releasing away from your ears. And breathing. If you like Ujjayi breath, try that now. So it's inhale, filtering the breath through. Exhale. So you're feeling that sense of alignment and the power that comes in when we stop compressing and collapsing in those forces of tamas and unconsciousness going into habit. We're working out the habits of the body and coming into that sense of alignment which is both physical, energetic, emotional, psychological, and all levels of our being as we create that unification, which is yoga, that unity. Taking an inhale, breathe out all the way from the earth, all the way to the crown, feeling the central Shushimuna channel, and then letting that light trickle down. So it's like a microcosmic orbit now, the light trickles down through the front of the body. You might be able to feel it like a golden pathway, and it comes down through the pubic bone into the earth, then you draw up through your grounding cord again, to your energetic rooting, up through the tailbone, all the way up through the spine, inhale to the top and then down again. You might like to add in the bandha as well, of mula bandha, so that you really allow that grounding vital life force to pump to the brain, so you can actually clear a lot of adrenal fatigue from the system and draw power from the earth again. So as you breathe up, Breathing up to nourish the brain up to the crown and then whew, let that lovely golden light flood down through the front of the body. So you're feeling this microcosmic sort of orbit, this golden light circle drawing up from the earth all the way through the spine to the crown and down through the front of the body. And connect it through your consciousness. So your energy bodies are doing this as well. You're really able to see it. But if you don't see it, just sense it, allowing that sense of really drawing your attention in to feel the inner awakening that's going on, not just focus or fixated on the outer form. So from here, you might like to take the legs into a little bend and just allow that same flowing roll through Pachamodhanasana as you roll forward and back, winding out the spine. And you might like to just hold onto the back of the knees here and just grow the spine to release the pelvis so that essentially you're moving from 
the pelvic rolling as you undulate forward and back. So you can just play around with that, but keeping the heels extended as you move through Pachamottanasana. From here, we just close the feet together and just create a little butterfly for the hips, just to open the hips to help the, the grounding foundation so that we're becoming the receivers, we're becoming actual sort of funnels for divinity, grounding through into the earth. So you want the feeling of the pelvis to be open, the hips to be open, surrendering out of our survival tension that just pushes us up and out into our mental bodies. We want to draw down and ground and root and earth. So that you can move from that depth of relaxation and action. From these little butterfly movements, you might like to play around with some more little rolling undulations for the spine, really feeling that you can ease out any places of rigidity and holding. All of this you could really take your time, though I'll demonstrate briefly. And from here, a really nice one is just to wrap your hands underneath and cup your own feet and take a little bow and sink into the restorative version of this, um, this kind of bow that you feel where you let your head go and dropping into this cobbler's pose, holding your own feet so you're making an energy seal, everything's feeding back in. One breath you might like to try with this one as you sink into this and you notice that the, the sacrum starts to fan open, the sense of expansion here like a flowering lotus at that sacred, at that sacred triangle joint. Is this breath where you breathe in, ujjaya, and you're aware of the three part breathing. So you're breathing into your lower belly, you're breathing to the side ribs opening sideways, and then into the heart. You don't need to stop at each part, but just aware of the wave building from the belly, from the lower abdomen. Breathing in, more breath to come, expanding sideways and into the heart. And then when we want to breathe out, we're going to sigh out through the golden thread breath with a little hole in the mouth. As we drop down. And we can be a bit like a floppy rag doll here and just sink into that that forward fold as you cup your own feet. So you jaya breath, drawing in, mouth is sealed, slow filtration of the breath into the belly, opening through the side ribs, expanding sideways, and last into the chest. Pausing for a moment, if you can, pause for three counts. And then sigh out. Slowly from there, and you might take your time and just sink into it for a good five minutes. We'll come into a little tabletop. So I'm going to begin a flow here, which just takes you through the asanas more like a dance. And, and so you can kind of feel into it more rather than trying to get some instruction. You just sort of explore that flow of it. So we begin. Root the palms down. Ground the knuckles, find the knees are below. So we're looking for alignment first before we flow in every posture. Hips above the knees, find that solid rooting and then we can flow.
So when you finish this flow, you bring yourself into Malasana, into this little squatting pose. Deep rooting into the earth, you breathe up from the earth, engaging Mulabandha, the perineum seal. As you draw up through that central channel to your crown, and then allow that flow of light to cascade down through the front body, emptying the exhale and releasing Mulabandha, and drawing up again, drawing up from the earth, engage Mulabandha, rise up through the spine, yet root down through your grounding cord. You can create strong engagement there of your inner knees squeezing in as the elbows press out and the palms press together, you'll find that you create this beautiful like self kind of osteopathic move where you feel that sense of opening in the sacrum, grounding and rooting your elevation. Take at least four minutes here just enjoying the benefit here. You're also really opening the channels of the stomach line on the outer shin, rooting down into the earth. Try to drop your weight back a little bit so instead of forward, we might start here and gradually over time we'll come back. We might start with your heels high or using blocks and gradually the hips will open that we can draw back and come into that full squatting posture. From here, really allowing yourself to look up and grow tall and root down. Feel the inner channels opening. Breathing up so you can hear your own breath, Ujjayi breath, and perhaps sighing out with that golden thread breath. After some time planting the hands, rooting them down and unfurling as you allow the spine to float down into that inversion, feeling the decompression of the spine. As you roll forward where your hips are over your ankles, bring the feet parallel forwards, engage the quads to release the hamstrings as you slowly undulate the spine in that snake-like flow. You might like to bring your feet closer together. For me, I'll demonstrate with the legs apart. As you unwind the spine, you really let the head go and you let the jaw go. Relinquish the doer, like opening the trap door of the brain, just let all the negative energy just pour out. And then very slowly, rocking forward onto your tiptoes, rocking back, lifting the toes up, so we can release those bladder lines, sciatic lines down to earth. Rolling forwards and back, pouring the weight into the palms, pressing the palms down and drawing back. You can feel the whole pelvic region opening, the nurturing that that brings, and then actually feeling that you make a little slight bend in the knees, but you're still hugging the bandas of the knees, quads engaged, to roll up, let your hands go floppy like a rag doll, and let the spine roll up, no L shapes. And if you know that you have low blood pressure, Move even slower than you imagine. Really slow, full consciousness through the form. Until you rise up to standing. And we're gonna come into a goddess flow, turning your feet out. Releasing the hip flexors with the heels of your hands, not the tips, the heels. Pressing into the hip flexors and straight arms if possible. We're just going to shift weight side to side. In that goddess flow. Engaging Molabandha to support the foundation. And from here, maybe rising a little bit up, release the hands into the trident of Shiva. So you feel the balance of the Shiva Shakti. Then just allowing the forearm to rest here on the top of the quad, releasing that kidney line there. 
stretch over and you might like to straighten this leg, the right leg, or keeping it bent as you feel and we spiral the other way. Play around with both options and you might see that the hand here is in Gyana Mudra. As you stretch side, breathing out, inhale to side. Grounding down again, turning the feet in, walking them in to a wide stance, arms pressing down, the hands pressing onto the thighs as you lower yourself into whatever version of Malasana you'd like. Coming into that squat and if it's too much there, of course, use a block or a pillow just to sit on and open. As you press the knees in, you press the elbows out to create that opening through the back of the pelvis to let that full flow happen unimpeded up from the earth to the crown, downloading from the crown all the way back down to earth. Taking some time to pause here before you set yourself into the closing asana in your version of Sukhasana, where you might take a blanket or a towel and just wrap them around your ankles to support, to have a little bit of holding there, support underneath the knees, or taking a pillow underneath both knees, or drawing in a little bit, and allowing the knees to ground, and allowing the tailbone to float over the back of your raise, whether it's a rolled up yoga mat or a block or a pillow, making sure you're not squashing the tailbone and the sacrum, but keeping that floating of the tailbone down is like your anchor rooting into the earth. And then there's space to grow tall, to rise up. And one more time, gathering from the earth in that bowing forward, taking some time in that yin posture of protestation of that sense of just gratitude to the earth, to this moment. Relinquishing the doer, the head, the identity, drawing the power from the earth, rising up from your little bud, allowing the flowering to open into the full sahasra, thousand petaled lotus. Inhale and draw through the central channel, sealing with a prayer. Coming back to your original intention for the practice, feeling that cultivating of the nectar there in your heart that is gathered, the light that is awoken. And just in that self-nurturing principle as an act of metta, bring your hand to your lower belly your right hand and your left hand to your heart. And we'll seal with a prayer, which is that call to divinity to lead us from untruth to truth, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. And the last part of the prayer is where we dedicate the benefit of this practice to all beings with the chant, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu, which is that prayer, may, may all beings be free from suffering. May all beings be happy. Join me if you wish. Take a deep breath in. Oh, as a Thomas said, Gamaya, Tamasoma, Jotie Gamaya, Mrityoma, Mritam Gamaya, Om Loka, Samasta. Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Shri Gribhyo Namaha Hari Om